everybody, welcome to this week's edition of the Mastermind Meeting, and we're going to begin today by uh, letting you all know that we have a new regional organizer, and his name is Chris Walsh, and he is in the Hollowell and Augusta, Maine area, and welcome, and I wanted to let everybody else know that as well, both here and those of you who are watching at home. Thank you, Cecil. <laughs> The, uh, uh, with us today on the call are Chris, um, Greg Nolmeyer, who is in the Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, Ann Michigan. Hey guys. Yep. Uh, Jim Kelly, who is in Boca Raton, Florida. With his grandpa Rosaurus shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Art Don, who is in the Washington DC area. Hello everyone. Harry Legg, who is in the Verona, New Jersey, New York City area. Hello, hello. Forrest uh, Abnamia, who is in the, what's the name of the town? I'm in Delaware and Columbus, Ohio. Hey, guys. Delaware and Columbus, Ohio. And Tyrone Talbot, Ta Talbert, Ty, who is in uh, Colton. Colton, Inland Empire, California. Southern California. And Daniel Stringer, who is in the Paisley and greater, uh, what, what area of Florida again? Uh, well, we're in Paisley, but we're also the land or Orlando area. Hello. Cool. And did I miss anybody? Because the way it's scrolling across is a little. Uh, well, I'm here as well. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Matt, who is here in the, in the Maryville, Tennessee, greater Knoxville area? Knoxville, Tennessee. Hey, okay. And did I miss anybody else? Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, what I wanted to talk to everybody about today is that at this point, most of you are spending some time at home, uh, either by yourself or with your wife or with your wife and your children. And uh, there's a lot of people stressing. I'm, I'm being told by a... Uh, by one of our guys who is an officer that a lot of people are having mental health issues due to the stress and the, uh, um, you know, just everything that's going on. Jim, would you care to talk to, talk to that for just a moment? To speak to that, I should say. You're on mute right now. Oh. Yeah, just, uh, just that it's a change in, you know, everybody's uh, social patterns and, you know, what they're used to doing in life. And unfortunately, a lot, you know, a lot of folks don't deal well with change. So seeing a, you know, a higher number of, uh, uh, you know, mental issues that are coming up out on the streets and in homes. So just make sure you take care of yourself physically, spiritually, and mentally while, uh, while this is all going on. Yep. All, all the above. As I saw one guy on 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 the uh, on the news last night that they had on that they were talking to, um, he said, "You know, obviously hope and pray at the same time. Make smart decisions. So you don't just rely on hope. You just don't rely on prayer, and you don't just rely on smart decisions. It's more is more. Do it all. And that's exactly where I'm at with it. Um, Makes make the smartest decisions you can, and and all of that, and hope and pray all at the same time, and basically don't isolate yourself. The way that you're watching this, you can absolutely get things set up so that you can video conference with pretty much anybody you know, uh, whether you're doing that through your phone, so that you can see a, see their see them live on there the way that you're seeing us, or whether you're just talking to them. Uh, but I recommend that you actually try to talk to some of the folks with the video um, to help ease some of that isolation um, that you might be experiencing at the moment. Um, don't stress, just take, some, just sit down, make a plan of action for how you're doing and what you're doing and, and then act on that plan intelligently. Um, be careful on the internet. There's a lot of crazy you know, hold your breath for 10 seconds and somehow that'll make sure that it's cured the disease or something. And, and there's, there's like insane stuff going on like that. And, 
Um, just be very wary and double check anything that you find. I don't mean double check it by finding another dubious source on the internet either. I mean, see what the experts on this are saying and, and that kind of thing. Um, be happy to spend some time at home and don't stress this will, at some point, this will end and life will resume and uh, keep busy. Uh, train clear Tai Chi the, uh, and go to clearmartialarts.com and you can sign up there and train clear Tai Chi if you're not doing that already. And most of you that are seeing this uh, should be doing that already. We are putting up a lot of very specific content right now um, as we're recording all classes. Uh, we're not doing any live ones other than the people that are there helping me record that are live that, are, that, you know, it's a very small group of us, not very many at all, like three um, and me being one of the three. The, uh, and we're posting them and that kind of a thing. And then, of course, when we're doing the, the call today, other than home here with the family, it's just me. Um, and then Matt is here at, in my home office and that kind of thing. Um, and we're all recording all the classes and posting them due to being uh, sheltered in place and the social distancing and all of that. Um, the current new content is mostly stuff that you can do by yourself. Um, there is lots of content already on, this, on my site for two-person practice. So if you have a second person to practice with, and I am on occasion saying, hey, grab somebody long enough to see that this is what, it's, what you're doing briefly and, then, and, then they don't, and that they don't have to have any knowledge to help you uh, like that. But then most of it is by yourself, assuming that you, know, you may not have somebody there that you can actually do the practices with. Um, if you have children at home, practice your material and, and get the kids to join in you know, carefully, obviously, depending on what it is. I showed one last night where I was like, okay, and then you can kind of get, you know, have fun with the kids, but, but, you know, that's not, oops, you know, did something or other to my children. Be careful, obviously. Um, spend some time in meditation and contemplation that is, that is actually structured time. So not just, okay, let's see what's going to occur to me, but actually set a goal doing things like marrow washing uh, meditation. Some of the Qigong that we put out on the video last week, or you're really doing some very specific practices. Um, make plans and organize your future activities. Once this is over, you know, if you haven't made any plans, then you're going to try to kick things back in, but you're going to actually have to probably plan some things and make arrangements for who you're going to call and how you're going to call them in terms of coming back to your classes if you're a teacher um, or what you're going to do. Make those kind of plans now and just have them on a computer or something in a folder so that you can go open it up and really make your plans and do, um, you know, do have all your, have it, have it organized already. And that way, once, once this is eased off enough or, or ended to where things are going back to what the new normal will be, that you're able to hit the ground running and knowing what you're, what you're up to and not be wasting time that now really needs to be a time of more action and that kind of thing. Um, while you're at home, most of us have projects that we've been wanting to do or needing to do and putting off. Do those projects. Uh, the hardware stores, at least most places, uh, everywhere that I'm aware of, are still open. So if you need something, you can go and get that stuff and do that. Um, and so, you know, put, get that stuff done now while you're at home and actually and actually have the time for that. Obviously, spend time with the married and or with kids spend time with the wife and family and do it do it enough that when this is over you're like okay it might be a few days before i see you again while i'm working on other stuff uh but you've had a bunch of time with them at that point um i do want to turn this over to the guys on the call and give each one of you some time is there anything you're doing or that you recommend people do um that would be useful or that you're finding um useful or helpful, or um, that's a good use of your time while this is going on, that kind of thing. Um, so. I'm spending more time in bed. <laughs> Do you no, not normally I, I, get a lot of sleep, or, or? No, no. I mean, that before I get up, I'm making sure that I'm choosing uh, how I'm going to approach the day a little bit more than I used to. Um, so I've got a couple of small kids, and it's amazing the amount of 
uh, communication that working less requires or work, I'm still doing some video classes and setting that kind of stuff up. And so for me to, you know, get out of bed and go get breakfast or whatever, I already need to kind of have done some meditation uh, before I'm even out of bed. So I'm finding that kind of stuff that uh, trying to be there when I'm there and not when I'm not, <laughs> you know? So by the yeah. time I leave the bedroom, I'm good. I'm great to be with kids, get them going. And then I'm not with them for a little bit and I get some work done, but the work times are smaller. The personal times are smaller. Everything is just smaller. So I just feel like I need to, to choose and be a little more careful. And that starts at the beginning of the day. And then that continues a little bit as well. Yep. Uh, for, uh, for, um, while you guys are at home like that, especially if you again, if you've got somebody else you can do, do it with, whether it be the children or, or wife or husband or whatever, depending. Um, and I'm saying this more to you senior guys work on your, um, level two, you know, your intermediate curriculum stuff and start, start going through that. And of course there's plenty of stuff in there that's solo, um, as well as you know, it's probably uh, it's probably basically about one third solo and two thirds uh, hands on, but that one third solo is still quite a bit of material, and start studying up on that stuff so that you can take the individual module section tests, and uh, and take that you know and do that. So cool. Chris Walsh weighs hand. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was a good feature. <laughs> it's it's nice. I don't even. I'm gonna have to have somebody show me where that's at on here. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm trying to do is I'm trying to stay consistent with the timing that I had previous to working from home. I, I don't want to lose that pattern in my life. So when this all goes yeah. back, I'm trying to reestablish patterns. So um, if yeah. I can maintain the times that I train uh, with my students and I continue that training. And then I maintain my time when I train, I, I, I do that as well, so that I can ease back in easy without having a, a big change on top of this change. And then also I'm looking at an opportunity. Now, I, I used to have a 45 minute commute that I don't have anymore. And I have to admit the first week I decided to get up an hour later and sleep in. So I feel good, really good now. But now I'm gonna start getting back at the same, up at the same time and now I have another hour of my day. And I, I think there's a lot of people in my community that also have that extra time. And I'm going to try and communicate with them um, and see if they're interested in doing the um, Zoom meeting Tai Chi training at maybe 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. before the day gets started. Since, you know, I, I don't have to commute. A lot of people probably don't have it either. So yeah. that's what I'm looking at. Cool. Daniel? Um, yeah, for me, uh, the first one is limit, you know, how much I'm looking at a screen just because I think um, it sucks time away so quickly, uh, whether it's watching things or whatever you're looking at, it can be, it can just eat up the time. And when you have a lot of time, it's easy to waste your time that way. Uh, the second thing is because my, my job, I work in a restaurant normally, I'm usually on my feet a lot. And so what I'm doing is I'll take, say, four hours. You know, we have, we're very fortunate we have a large property here. Uh, and I'll say for, like, the next four hours, I have to just be walking or moving. I can't sit down because I don't want to build a habit of sitting and laying down all the time. Um, and then probably more geared to what you were saying about the spiritual aspect of things. Um, now, I haven't been able to do this every day, but it's, it's been a goal, is uh, to call three people I know and just, like, hear what they're going through or, or listen to what they're up to or what they're dealing with and then just spend a little bit of time trying to encourage them to you know do better or work on projects you just try to encourage them a little bit because people are dealing with depression and as Jim said people are being pretty isolated and I found for myself if I take the time to try to lift other people up uh it helps me from not being depressed or frustrated or any of that kind of stuff so and I would recommend I would recommend that when you're calling them that um if you can try to video call them so that there's a closer to a living interaction happening there, not just the voice. Yeah, well, I think that's a very good challenge. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, Jim? I think uh, one of the biggest things is, uh, like uh, like we had mentioned before, you know, reaching out to people and talking to them. And I, 
I've noticed uh, over the last couple of weeks a, a very nice uh, noticeable spike in uh, students being more receptive to the, you know, to the healing aspects of the Tai Chi and the Qigong. And, you know, we've gone over a lot in class about the, the way energy field and trying to work on that and develop that to, you know, keep yourself healthy. And um, a lot of the, you know, the Qigong exercise, the, you know, electromagnetic and, you know, just worked on a lot of that stuff to, to make yourself feel stronger because they say being run down makes you very susceptible to getting sick and stress makes you very susceptible to getting sick. So it's important, like I said, to, to just balance out the, uh, the mental stuff and the stress and, and try to have that little bit of physical defense also that little bit of strength and, you know, the idea that you're doing something to help yourself. Cool. The, uh, uh, let's see here. Art? Well, what, what, what I do, whether with, with myself or with, with talk, talking to other people, is, um, and again, and for example, practicing Tai Chi or the various Qigong exercises, and, and, and this this time under these circumstances where there might be a tendency to have lethargy set in, um, I say, well, um, the first thing is, is that um, you might, or I might feel the need to just push myself a little bit to, to get up and even though there is all this um, time in front of me to go ahead and, and start doing things um, and Again, in a, a Tai Chi exercise practice sense, I um, get up and just start with basic warm-up exercises or meditation or something to, to um, ease into the, the exercise practice time. And once, once I do that, then um, things pretty much flow from one exercise to another one to uh, more meditation and and doing some form and even if I if I start a twenty minute form um, I say okay I'm gonna start this and and go through it and I just after a while of going through and paying attention to it and, and then also trying to, to sort of have a a soft focus in my mind so to speak I'm going through and then I realize that I'm I'm on the the last five minutes or so of the form going through a well, and I feel as though I've um, spent this time um, very productively and going through the form and doing my exercises. So, so as I say, um, initially there might be a feel of a need to push just a little bit to get up, but then after that, um, everything everything flows and um again in in, in the practice I, I i'll stress um maybe working on one particular facet of of tai chi or the exercise uh, for example relaxation or or deep breathing or, or maybe combined too because for example in, in relaxation and in deep whole body breathing they, as a lot of the different facets do, they work together very well and um, just just build up that. And um, I find as I continue that the other, other facets of um, alignment and connection, grounding, rooting sort of develop along with them without having to um, expend a lot of thought saying, oh, now I have to do this and do that everything just sort of uh, comes together naturally. And so um, I find the time very well spent um, and then I can go face the rest of the day for whatever. I'm so I'm, I'm hearing you say structure and schedule some of your time and that'll help you to get started. And then once you get started, you'll be into it. Um, right, yeah. yeah. And now a word from our sponsor. Is chi real? The word chi is the Chinese word for energy. And energy is everywhere, all around us. Physics says so. 
The question is not, does energy exist? Because of course energy exists. The real question is, what forms of energy can human beings tap into and use? My name is Richard Clear, and internal power is what I do. After over 40 years of continuous study and research, I created a one-of-a-kind online program that my students are raving about. In it, I revealed the secrets of effortless internal power. The program has had so much success, I decided to take it to the public. In fact, the results are so powerful that I put a money-back guarantee on it. Find out more about this incredible program at internalpowerkeys.com. Chris, I saw you raise, you did the raise your hand thing. You're going to have to teach, somebody's going to have to teach me where that's at. Anyways, go ahead. Well, another thing that I've been doing, and it isn't, it isn't, uh, it isn't really a martial art thing, but um, since my, my employer has moved all of our employees to work from home, I have, um, I have about 10 employees that report to me that I'm, I'm trying to stay connected with them to keep their mind in the right place because they're going through the same thing that everyone else is going through. And they're also at home now in these makeshift work environments. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting at my dining room table, actually, because my wife is in the office. because She's worked from home, so she's using the office. And if you don't have a good work environment, you don't have a good ergonomic setup, you're, you're really going to have a lot of additional pain and stress, and you may not be aware of it when you're focused on doing your job until later in the day when you're, you realize you, you didn't support your arms. We don't have arms on your chair because it's a kitchen chair. So what I started talking to my team about is setting an alarm, um, you know, somehow on their phone or, or through the, uh, the functionality at, at work, any of our calendars. They can set an alarm to go off every 30 minutes and just get up, take a two minute micro break and they can stretch, they can look around, they can do some push ups. If you did 10 pushups, yeah, just a couple of things um, to get your body moving. Yeah, you can just change what you're looking at so you're not staring at the screen all day. All those things give you a, a quick revitalization, revitalization in your body. Um, and that'll help you go through the rest of the day and not suffer with pain by the end of the day. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry? Harry Leg. There we go. Hello. Hi, Stephen. Um, so uh, one of the things, obviously, is even more time to practice. But I will echo one of the things that Chris said, and that is to, and, and Art, is to keep the same schedule as much as possible. So I had a teaching schedule. I have a training schedule, which yep. there's, there's more time for that now. Um, and I've been very close in contact with almost all of my students. I have one who is stuck on a cruise ship right now. She oh. went out well before this became a thing. So we haven't been able to communicate. But um, yeah. the rest of my students uh, are very interested in online classes. So I wanted to share what I'm doing with that. Um, I can switch here, I believe, to the other room. It should switch. OK. Um, so I spent some time over the last week, because I'm a bit of a tech geek, putting together live streaming in my workout and teaching room. And without boring people with a bunch of technical stuff, I'll tell you a couple of the things that I did that uh, will make it um, hopefully a better experience for everyone. One is a wireless lavalier mic. So my voice isn't, you know, across the room 10 feet into a, a webcam mic that's, you know, 10, 15 feet away. The other thing I did, which I've kind of wanted in my practice room anyway, <coughs> is put a screen up on the wall so that I can see myself while we're on the Zoom meeting uh, classes to know that I'm on screen, they can see my feet, or, or whatever the case now, may be, or my hey, hands. Now, obviously, this is what you're talking about now is for people out there that are instructors. And so, obviously, and if you're not an instructor and can do this, that's great. But but if you were at home going, what? I'm training on my own. I don't have space for that on these other things or the, the money to order all of that. He's actually talking to people who are doing more of the instructor thing right now. And so, if you're an instructor and you're kind of at home doing this and you don't have a dedicated space, in the way where you can go and use it at this time, uh, might be time to set up that kind of a space and then to do what the kind of things that Harry's talking about here. Yes, go ahead, Harry. So um, a couple, I'll tell you that I'm teaching three types of classes for those that do teach. One, I teach a whole bunch of seniors um, every uh, twice a week in the mornings. And I find that they want to be taken through all the warm-up exercises and follow along 
sorts of classes. Now, I will teach them a few new things here and there, but just to get them going, also to let them see each other in this virtual environment and be able to talk uh, is a good thing. Um, the other thing I'm doing for my private students is a dedicated class for them where it's not so much follow along, but they can ask questions. We may do a few things together and I can teach them uh, an extra thing or two. Then the other thing that I wanted to mention um, for those that are instructors is there are probably Facebook groups for the towns that you live in or nearby towns. So what I've done is I've put um, some uh, posts in all the town uh, Facebook groups near where I live saying, hey, if you'd like to relieve stress and anxiety, I'm offering Tai Chi classes online and I'm making it donation based. I'm just letting them know I've invested a little bit of money in some equipment, but really this is for the community, whoever wants to join in. So that'll be a third class uh, that I do. Um, and that's what I've been spending my time on uh, and look forward to getting these going this coming week. Cool. Uh, I like that from the standpoint of promotion uh, that you can do the stuff that we normally do in our introductory <laughs> classes, you know, the first couple or so um, and put that out there and give people an introduction to what Tai Chi is and what it's about. And then, you know, when, and then they may want to do something with you now. And then when this is over, Obviously, if they've been seeing you, they're a lot more likely to come out and, uh, and want to continue with you. They've enjoyed what they saw online in person would be that much more. So, I, cool. Yeah, I totally hope so. And, and I'll also sending them to you, of course, in, in clear uh, Tai Chi. So. Yeah, that's, that's if they're doing, doing it from long enough distance, they can't drive to you. you know, our goal with this is that you can get, obviously, the online instruction. And then with the regional organizers and the, and the folks, you'll see there are more folks coming on. We're trying to do that so that ideally that you can have somebody close enough to you that obviously not right now, but when this is not going on that you can get in the car and drive to and get hands on and get more instruction and help and guidance and all those kind of things. So, and these guys are, are really doing it. So you, when you put hands on with them, you'll be able to get that. Um, all right. Who have we, and I know Matt, we haven't talked to you yet. Who else do we have on here that we have not heard from yet? And yeah, um, I'll just say um, a couple of things that have helped me out through this whole thing. Obviously, it's changing. And I think one of the big unknowns is, well, how long will this whole thing last? And are we just going to be cooped up inside more and more? Um, probably. And so one thing that I've been doing the past week has been going outside and going on walks. And hopefully this is something we can continue doing. Um, although, you know, this seems like they're kind of starting to set their foot down even on that sort of thing. But I think the outside is um, pretty crucial to keeping the positive mind state going through this whole thing. So it's helped me out. Um, and then I think just, you know, continuing to think about how you can improve your position, make yourself feel more comfortable, whatever you got to do to um, improve that would just make you feel better and thinking more clearly and, um, you know, just being prepared for whatever is coming down the pike. And hopefully it gets out of the woods quickly, but if not, hopefully we're all prepared for that too. So, yeah, cool. hopefully everyone's doing good through all this. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's like Daniel, sometimes it's hard for me to remember that a lot of times people don't have that much space. You know, I'm used to being able to go out here and walk three acres on my property, um, that kind of a thing. And so in my yard in Tampa was like a lot and a half and, and very heavily – uh, a lot of fruit trees and that kind of thing. And so you could go out and spend time out there, at least on the deck and do, and do things. Um, and so absolutely that outside time is crucial that you get some, if you can just obviously remember the, and keep the social distancing and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Ty. Yes, actually a lot of things that um, people brought up are important one of the things that I find that my students really seem to appreciate that I was surprised about was the social contact. Um, was, was the what? Social contact. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually have um, Richard, who I hear from about four times a day. <laughs> <laughs> See, you found out how serious of a student he really is, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then, you know, I, you know, just make casual, you know, time for other people, other students, 
and they find that um, it's really important to them. They really appreciate it, which kind of surprises me. I guess a lot of people are isolated or don't have family and friends in the area or don't have good relationships with their families and friends. So I go ahead and contact them and fill that void. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And try to do that. And we would recommend for any of you to try to do that and really keep that contact up. Um, you know, on an average day or two, if you had a day or two alone, a lot of times with how we normally live our lives, um, we feel pretty good about that. Oh man, I got some alone time. That's great. Um, and if you need that, by all means, take it. Um, when this, as this keeps going on though, and it becomes, you know, now it's a week and now it's two weeks. Um, it's really easy for the isolation to sneak up on you and, or that there are other people in your life that, that that isolation is really not treating them well at all. And absolutely like, like Ty saying there, um, and Daniel, um, try to keep, keep enough contact and enough, like I said, for me, I would say video call people so that there were, that way, um, you know, they actually get to see you in an interaction like that. So cool. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Who else? Um, who have I left out here other than Matt at the moment? Is that everybody but Matt? Okay, Matt, last but not least. <laughs> um, well, uh, you know, it, for me, it's been an interesting, um, an interesting situation as it develops. Um, I, you know, I was out in uh, L.A. with Ty um, when – Things were kind of starting to take hold out there. And then when we came back, uh, there was a scare that maybe I had the coronavirus and it turned out that I didn't, but I kind of had to be self-quarantined. So I've already had the alone time thing and, and uh, <laughs> much more than my fill of it. Thank you very much. Um, and, uh, and then, um, you know, coming out of that, having the rest of the country now ramping up and, um, you know, and I'm still vulnerable, um, you know, trying to do just the smartest things that we can. I guess the main thing that I've done so far is um, I've really tried to just get a, a much more realistic picture of what the virus is, wh what kind of trajectory it's on, what we can realistically do about it, how to give ourselves every possible advantage um, to, to not get it in the first place and to, uh, you know, mitigate the symptoms as much as possible if we do get it. Um, and I've just really tried to um, sort of wrap my head around what it is and how the smartest way to deal with it is so that I can, as much as possible, incorporate that information into my, you know, my life and what I kind of still have to do. Um, you know, I just, just because this virus is out there doesn't mean that I've got, uh, you know, all this free time on my hands. It's just that I have to find smarter ways to manage what I have to take care of and, you know, do that uh, in the, in the best ways possible so that I can, you know, not, not hit the, the bug. Um, and so um, that, that's kind of mainly what I've done is just tried to stay on top of you know, what, you know, just, I mean, just kind of simple stuff, um, how to, how to make sure that, you know, I'm always washing my hands at the right times and appropriate times. And if I do have to go to the store to, you know, maintain that social distancing, even when a lot of other people around me are not as concerned about that um, and, uh, you know, not paying attention to how close they are to people and that kind of stuff. Um, well, and for the store, make sure that you're doing your hands before you touch anything. And then when you come out, because people are touching and, and looking at something and putting it back down and breathing on stuff and everything else, make sure you're washing your hands again, uh, you know, with, uh, or disinfecting, uh, coming yeah. out of there. Yeah. And soap and water, um, is, uh, you know, the best thing, um, alcohol over 60% concentration by volume is um it will uh it will kill this type of virus normally um and you know those those kinds of things and so i'm just aware of that and i've done what i can to prepare for it and i continue to do smart things and so you know now if we all end up having to be you know shut inside for the next two weeks i i, I at least have 
my food and stuff like that taken care of. You know, I know kind of what I, what I need to do to, to, to be ready for that. I'm not super excited about that possibility, but um, you know, I've got, uh, I've, I am blessed with enough space to get outside and do stuff. Um, my, uh, on, on the property there, um, the owner likes to garden and I do as well. And so that's going to take care of some physical activity for me. And then obviously I've got tons of training to do. Um, I'm like way behind on where I want to be personally. And so I've got, you know, plenty of work, uh, in, in that department. And then in terms of my job, I've, I've always been, um, you know, uh, doing stuff online and sitting in front of a computer. And so I've already had to figure out how to deal with all that kind of stuff. So this really impact that part of my life, um, you know, fortunately for me. Um, and so I, I, I really already kind of got a routine built around this. And like I said, it's just fun figuring out the smartest ways to manage my time in the wake of the epidemic. But, um, but other than that, it's, uh, it's been pretty par for the course for me. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let me say this to, to everybody, um, both of you guys on the call and then those at home right now. Uh, it is my hope that this thing would be over in like two weeks. What the senior experts are saying about this is that based on population and percentages and the growth rate and how much of the population is infected now versus how much of the population is left and the way that the virus acts and all that stuff, they're saying this could be 10 weeks before we're out of this. Um, and that, so what we're talking to you about on this call today, and if you took it kind of as a, well, okay, go back through and watch it again. Because if it's 10 weeks, if you want to keep your sanity, you're going to want to need and do a lot of the different kinds of things that we're talking about and structure yourself and really figure out how to make this a way of life for the time being. Uh, because in weeks one, two, three, you know, it'll feel more like a vacation. Somewhere around week three, four, or five, it's going to quit doing that. And your sanity and your uh, peace of mind and your, um, uh, you know, how you're, do how you're going about things and doing things is going to be very dependent on what kinds of actions you take and how you take them. Um, and so, um, if it's if it goes like that, and and every indication is that it is going to go like that, um, the uh, a you wouldn't want to start taking risky behaviors, thinking oh, and this is one of the things they've been talking about that they're concerned that that there'll be sort of this. Uh, people will think okay, it's been a couple of weeks, so now we're okay, and not paying attention to what's going on, and then um, take actions that aren't so smart. Versus if it continues to ramp up. Um, everything that they're talking about for the uh, social distancing and isolating and, and staying, you know, in place and all that stuff is going to be so much more crucial to try. In other words, we're going to have to have a couple weeks basically without new cases before we reasonably are at a place where, okay, this thing is over. And right now we're adding more and more and more and more people every day. And so, um, you know, pray, hope, and take smart action, um, all three things, not just one or the other. The, uh, okay. Um, any other thoughts or comments uh, before we end today? Okay, well, thank you guys. Um, I'm available to you. Uh, Matt and I will plan for some of the stuff that we were talking about and hopefully bring some things to you here uh, soon. He'll, he'll probably send it out by email and then we can obviously uh, talk about it next week and we hope you folks at home are getting something out of this please put comments below and let us know uh, what your thoughts are and any any other thoughts that you might have regarding the kind of things we've been talking about today and if, if there are any questions or any things you would like us to address while we're doing these since probably a few more of you are watching uh, than normal because you have a little bit more time to do that um, and we want we're here for you and thank you for watching thanks guys thank you hey, everyone thank you everybody stay safe good day jim take care thank you see you grandpa source <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was gonna have uh, a guest speaker
Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got to show everybody this little miniature killer Stay dog you got. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, you got to yeah. have a service dog, too. That's it. <laughs> Will she bark at me if she sees me up close? No. <laughs> no, she, no. She's, she's like, whatever. She's just looking around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Take guys. care of yourself, and we'll see you soon. All right. All right. And now, a word from our sponsor. For those of you who are interested in internal power and want a reliable place to start, and for anyone who wants to experience internal power for themselves, go to internalpowerguide.com. I built a crash course in hands-on internal power. The Practical Guide to Internal Power is a work-at-your-own-pace online program. It is the course I use to get students from zero to 60 as quickly as possible, and it is totally free. So sign up at internalpowerguide.com now and get started right away. That's internalpowerguide.com.